Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled People, where you come to hear stories about people who think they can always get what they want because they're special. Guys, I hope you're having another awesome day today, and today's lineup is a wild one. Let me tell you that. The stories are absolutely outrageous today. You know the drill. Sit back, relax, and get ready to shake your head at how ridiculous some people can be. Oh, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for future stories. So, this just happened yesterday. I work at a liquor store. I'd only just started my shift, and this one entitled man stomps up to me and starts yelling, asking me if I'm the manager of the place. I explained that while I wasn't the overall manager, I was the shift manager, and asked if there was anything I could help him with. He tells me he bought four bottles of wine from the shop on the weekend, but the first three had been corked and undrinkable. He called up our customer service line, and they told him to bring it back for replacement or refund. I asked him, would you like them replaced or refunded? He tells me he'd like them refunded, please. So I asked him to follow me over to the till so we can put through his refund. He produced one single unopened bottle from the bag he was holding and handed it over. I told him, I'm sorry, but I can only issue refunds on the bottles you return. Do you have the others? He then said, I was told I would get a full refund. I told him, yeah, but I'm not authorized to issue a refund on an item that's not actually being returned. Even an empty bottle would do. So at this point, he's screaming at me and says, who am I? I told him, I don't know who you are, sir. He then repeats it and asked, who am I? I don't understand what you're asking. Who am I? Do I look like an idiot? I told him, no, sir. Then stop trying to treat me like one. I was told I would get a full refund if I came to the store, and I'm not leaving until I get my full refund. I told him again that I can refund this bottle. I held up the one on the counter, but I'm not authorized to issue refunds on items that haven't been returned. If you could come back tomorrow morning, the manager might be able to help you. Now, I want to note that she would probably say the exact same thing, but honestly, I just wanted to get rid of him at this point. He then repeats again and says, I was told I'd get a full refund, and I will get my full refund. Sir, as I've explained, I can't issue a refund for an item that hasn't been returned. He then says, don't you get angry with me. I then lowered my voice slightly and said, I I'm sorry if that's how I sound, but I'm just trying to explain that. What's your name? Uh, excuse me? What's your name? I'm gonna call and complain. So I took out a spare piece of paper and carefully wrote my name and handed it to him. He looked at it and asked, who am I? Now, at this point, I was just starting to wonder if he was actually asking what his name was, and if he'd expected me to write it down so he wouldn't forget. I said, You're a customer. He then repeated, Do I look like an idiot? Now at this point, I had to stop myself from saying yes. But I said, No sir, you definitely are not an idiot. Would you like a refund on this one bottle? And he just grabbed the bottle and stormed out, glaring at me as he went. I wrote the incident up in the shop diary just in case he did come back. Later that evening, the manager called on an unrelated issue, and I took the opportunity to warn her just in case she didn't see the diary. She agreed that I had done the right thing, and we agreed that he was just probably trying to get some money out of us by threatening to cause trouble. She also agreed that I'm not known for losing my cool when dealing with problem customers, so even if he did complain, she would have my back. Seriously, what the heck was that guy trying to ask? Who am I? Who am I? Do I look like an idiot? No, no sir, you don't look like an idiot at all, but you sure as heck are acting like one. What a crazy story. He definitely was scamming for some cash 100%. Being a retail manager for a retail drugstore chain, Friday nights are very busy. Everybody's excited for the weekend and alcohol sales are up. So this story starts off as a typical Friday night, until a man who we'll call Ken walks in. So Ken is making his way to the cooler to buy a six pack of Corona beers glass. On his way there, he decides to hit on a woman and ask for her number. We'll call her Jane. Now, Jane's husband, who we'll call John, comes back and immediately confronts Ken and told Ken that Jane is his wife. Now, to get the full picture, Jane has a stroller with a baby in it. John's a large guy with tattoos for eyebrows and several extreme piercings, and he looks like he'd be able to crush Ken on his worst day. I'm talking if he had the flu. That's how tiny Ken was compared to John. Now, both parties go their separate ways until checkout. Ken's in front of John and Jane and tries again to ask Jane for her number. 
Now John, in a tougher and firmer voice, again confronts Ken to leave his wife alone. After Ken pays for his beer, he then decides to wait outside and again, he asks Jane for her number as they left. Now, at this point, John is now furious and grabs Ken's beer and slams it against a concrete pillar outside the store. The glass breaks and there's a huge puddle of beer. John then says, Next time that's your head. Leave my wife alone. I won't ask you again. He then leaves with Jane. And that was only the start of the crazy night with Ken. So Ken, being the entitled D-bag, comes back in and asks for a manager, and then proceeds to ask for a replacement case of beer. We told him that because we did not break his beer, we cannot replace his beer. We offered to call the police so he could report the assault and the loss, but Ken tried to make a case that the store would get a lot of bad press with the police and being on the news, so it would be cheaper and less stressful if we just gave him another case of beer. We kept saying no, multiple times. Then Ken throws a tantrum. He starts punching the concrete poles, throwing whatever he could get his hands on, and even toppling over our trash cans. I called the police not once, but twice. Unfortunately, it took the police half an hour to get to the store, and Ken refused to leave without his beer. So during that half hour, Ken is harassing customers and throwing his tantrum, screaming that we did this, and if we wanted it to stop, all we had to do was give him another case of beer. Luckily, the other manager who was on duty with me was a large and burly guy, and offered to escort customers to their cars. At one point, Ken even tried to grab the manager's leg like a little kid, begging for beer. When the police finally arrive, Ken's throwing his shoes and picks up a piece of broken glass, looking like he's ready to charge. That's when the police draw their guns and order his hands up and him on the ground. The police tell me that what they witnessed is enough for them to arrest him, but take my statement for good measure. Had Ken just listened to John's first warning, he would be home alone enjoying some beer. Instead, he spent the night in jail alone, with no beer. My friends, if this does not prove the saying, play dumb games, win dumb prizes, I don't know what does, guys. First time was a pass. It was an accident, you see a girl standing by herself, you ask for her phone number, she's got a husband, oops, sorry about that. Now the second and third time are unexcusable. Did this idiot really think he'd be able to continue harassing that guy's wife without consequences? He's really lucky that all that happened was his case of beer was on the ground. There's probably a lot of badass dudes out there that would have put an end to that ASAP with some thunder and lightning, if you guys know what I mean. Big boy, you like thunderstorms? Huh? Bet you do, right? Uh-huh. Little thunder? Stop it. Little lightning? Stop it. Thunder, lightning, thunder, lightning, ears! <laughs> oh! So, some backstory. This happened when I was studying at university and living with my parents. Our town is located roughly an hour drive from a big city where most of our neighborhood work, including my mom, her nice friend in the IT department, and the Karen, all employed by the same firm. There is a train to the city, but my mother would generally drive to work as it's quicker and I'd often tag along when our schedules allowed it. Around two months before the story takes place, Karen realized that she could ride to work and back home with my mom. So my mother, being the generous person she is, agreed to that, and demanded no payment as it wasn't any major inconvenience, as they were both heading to work anyway. She was also aware that Karen was doing some low salary job and had young kids at home. The nice IT friend, let's call her Anne, who was always taking the train home, asked my mother a few days beforehand if she and her daughter could ride home with her on Friday, as her daughter was going to be released from the hospital in the city and might not be feeling well. She also offered to take an early leave, so they'd be ready by the car, but my mom said they'd just go to the hospital together as it's only 10 minutes detour. Come Friday, and surprisingly, I finish my classes early and message my mom if I can tag along. My mom says yes, but at the same time she explains quickly Anne's situation and that the car will be packed. No problem for me. So 5 minutes to 5, I arrive at the parking lot and see Karen waiting. She sees me and gets visibly annoyed saying, Ugh! And now this car is going to become a public bus for annoying teenagers? Now I want to note that I was in my 20s and rather quiet in the car. I pretend not to hear that and just wait patiently. 10 minutes later, my mom arrives with Anne and we drive towards the hospital. The checkout must have been busy as we wait for about 20 minutes, but that's fine with me and my mom, as it's a special situation. However, Karen rants about waiting all the time, much to our annoyance. 
Anne finally shows, and we quickly realize that this was by no means just a checkup. Anne's daughter looks very frail and thin, her face was white, and her bald head was covered with a scarf. She was barely holding up, and it was clear she was just released from chemotherapy. I get off the front seat and go out to grab the daughter's luggage, to place in the trunk and let her take the front, as I don't feel comfortable having her crammed up in the back for comfort reasons. Anne quietly thanks me, and we roll back home, in relative silence, as the daughter fell asleep immediately. We go to Anne's home first, as they're on the way, and they start leaving quickly. Anne's daughter throws up the moment she wakes up, getting some puke on the car and quickly starts to apologize. We say we don't mind, it's no problem. We know that she just left the hospital, so she can have as many free passes as she wants. And there, it starts. Anne takes her wallet out and gets some money, around 60 bucks, and insists on paying my mom for both the ride and cleaning the car, which my mom quickly declines and tells her not to worry about it. However, at the same moment, Karen reaches for the money. For a moment, everything is silent, and then the conversation goes like this. Karen says, I will be taking it. Thanks. I asked her on what grounds. She replies, Well, we had to take this huge detour, and I'll be 40 minutes late getting home. I told her, well, you would have been even later if you'd taken the train. This is none of your concern. Karen scoffs and says, Huh, I don't take any trains home. I always ride this car, and not only am I late, this car's been ruined by Anne's daughter. I told her it's not even your car, and we don't mind. Karen says, Well, I ride in it every day, so I do mind. So in my head I'm thinking, this is my mom's car, you crazy woman. She then goes on and says, Anyways, the daughter puked in here close to my proximity, so I'm surely entitled to some damages. Anne interrupts and says, No, it's alright, I'm so sorry. She grabs the $60 from Karen, puts it into my mother's handbag, and proceeds to take another $25 out, and hands it to Karen, who quickly pockets the money. At this point, I told her, Anne, you shouldn't have given her a thing. She takes a ride with my mom daily and pays us nothing. Anne replied, Oh, I thought she's paying for fuel. So at this point, Karen chimes in and says, It doesn't matter. I take this car every day, and now I'm covered in some sick girl's vomit. What if my kids catch what she's sick with? Anne then grows angry and says she can't catch what her daughter has because her daughter has a brain tumor. So that somehow managed to shut Karen up. My mom gets out, took the daughter's luggage, and walked Anne and her daughter home, slipping the banknote that she was given into her mailbox on the way back. She says nothing and drives straight to Karen's home. My mom then says to her, I was driving you because it wasn't inconvenient for me, but it just became a huge inconvenience. This partnership is done. I don't care if you take the train from now on, get your own car, or just quit your job. I will not be driving you anywhere anymore. The $25 you were given for no reason should be enough for a week's worth of train tickets, so enjoy. This car is mine, and mine only, so get out. Now. So after that, I hardly saw Karen at all. Hopefully she's never coming back into the picture, and my mom now drives to work with Anne, who pays for fuel, even if nobody asked her to. Anne's daughter is in remission now, so she's doing much better, if you're curious. My friends, I absolutely cannot stand inconsiderate people. That woman's behavior was absolutely disgusting. It was beyond disgusting. The fact that this woman saw a sick kid and didn't give a care in the world and was all about me, me, me is absolutely despicable. I'm glad to hear that Anne's daughter is doing much better now, and Anne, OP, and her mother sound like such wonderful people. Now, if that story upset you, don't worry, my friends. I got you. <laughs> We're about to end on a lighter note. I hope you enjoy this last story because I sure as heck did. It's a beautiful story. So I took my 70 year old mother who's been paralyzed for more than 20 years to a neighborhood garage sale at the local wealthy gated community, which only does one garage sale for one day every year. Now I want to note that the paralyzed thing doesn't matter except to provide an accurate picture of the situation. So after going around the entire area, which treats it almost like a huge neighborhood barbecue and block party, we end up at a house that has a dryer for sale. We overhear the owner of the dryer, who's selling it for $150, explaining that his daughter bought it, but it got home, and realized it was gas, and she and her new husband had electric. Now, the dryer was originally $600 or so, but they never got around to returning it and asked her dad to just unload it. It still had the cellophane, protecting the easily scratched bits, 
And when I looked inside, it had the cellophane across the drum with the manual still in plastic wrapping. This thing had never even been plugged in. So at this point, there's a man trying to argue the seller down to 25 bucks. Initially, he walks up to the guy and says something along the lines of, you'll never get rid of this, nobody buys used dryers. Now, he's really loud and persistent about it too. He then says, this dryer's over a year old, no one's gonna give you anything for a used dryer. You're gonna have to pay for it to get hauled away. You're better off just giving it to me for free. Now, I don't know how to express this well, but the guy's really being a jerk about it. My mom checks out the dryer with no real intent to buy. Money was really tight, and she's not a jerk who's about to offer a ridiculous lowball offer like the other guy. I have about $50 on me, and she has about $20. I'm waiting until the other guy leaves to ask if I can buy it, but bring the money back the next day. My parents' dryer of 35 years had finally broken down, and my dad had been driving the clothes from the washer to the local laundromat and drying them a few times a week. They really do need the dryer. The seller looks over and sees my mom sadly looking at the dryer, and with the jerk still on her heels, asked if she's interested. My mom says, thank you, but I only have $20. It's a really nice dryer, though. The seller then says, sold, and shakes her hand. He says he's happy to deliver it because he has a flat trailer and it's no big deal. Hell, he'll even hook it up for her. The jerk is furious. He ups the bid to $75. The man looks at him dead in the eye and says, I sold it to this nice lady right here. Now, my mom is trying really, really hard not to burst into tears. My mom gives the man her address, and he indeed delivers it and hooks it up for her. My dad's thrilled, and then he asked, how much for the dryer? The man then says, one hug. He gives my mom a really big hug and refuses her money, and my dad's, and mine. I have the feeling that if the entitled jerk had just politely offered any amount of money, the seller would have accepted it. He just really wanted to get rid of that dryer that was taking up valuable real estate in his garage. Sometimes it really does pay to be nice. My friends, people like this really put a smile on my face. I always preach that you should always be kind to one another, and this is it guys, humans helping others in need. The real currency in this world is decency. You'd be surprised how far others would be willing to go for you if you just act like a kind, compassionate, and loving human being. Look at all the Karens in the world. They're literally always left with nothing, and never get what they want, because they're a-holes a lot of the time. With that said, my friends, I do hope you enjoyed this episode, and listen, thanks for hanging out with me today. I know there's a lot of you who come hang out with me every single day, and listen to these crazy stories, and I do appreciate you so, so much. I really, really do. If you guys missed the last episode of r slash Entitled People, I posted it yesterday. A guy throws a tantrum because OP didn't give him his house for free, and decided to sell it instead. It's absolutely ridiculous. Check it out if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you.